Hey guys, Ash Lane here coming at you today going over how to beat spawner decks. So mo many of you might know that the spawner deck strategy is my absolute favorite in the game. You can see the season just ended, collected uh, a few hundred uh, cups from last season, hopefully looking to improve upon that this season and add to my 432 legendary cups. So this is the deck I've been using. Now I do have some vulnerabilities on this deck and I'm actually going to show you guys some of the losses that I've incurred lately and maybe you'll pick up a tip or two on how to counter other spawner decks from those losses. Now of course in both of the losses you're going to see today I make a couple mistakes and the uh, you know the opponent capitalized on those mistakes in both of the matches and that's really what this game is all about no matter what deck you're countering you're going to be wanting to capitalize and wait and pick your spots very wisely and wait to capitalize on the mistakes that your opponent makes in the game. So you can see my Warlog looking pretty good here. I have, uh, I've won, you know, I think I've won maybe seven out of the last ten. But two uh, matches got the better of me, like I mentioned. And one was against uh, Lieutenant Wiggles here, who is actually one of my clan mates. So our, our cards were somewhat regulated. Uh, and you can see here, he's actually playing a, a decent amount of splash damage cards. He has the Fireball for direct splash damage, and he has the Princess for a long range in small splash damage. He has the, also he has the Dark Prince, which is a great splash damage card. It has uh, some hit points as well. And he has the Bomber in this deck. So all that splash damage is certainly going to provide a great counter for my deck. And my deck has trouble defending against a few cards as well. My deck's average elixir cost is almost 5. I think it's 4.9 right now. And granted, two of those cards are the uh, the two spawners, the uh, the Barbarian Hut and the, the Goblin Hut. But of course, I have difficulty coming up with immediate responses to really fast attacks. So I do have the Inferno Tower to distract hogs or princes. But you know what? The Inferno Tower can't stop everything. And my Inferno Tower is only up half the time in terms of my, you know, four card selection. So, a lot of the times, if opponent waits till the Inferno Tower goes down, and then immediately plays something that I'll need the Inferno Tower to counter, that's when they're able to take advantage of my, the slowness of my deck. Now, I'm playing the Barbarian Hut right now, and the reason I play the Barbarian Hut next to the King Tower instead of a few spaces up to distract units is because that's where my Inferno Tower goes. And if I play the Hut a little bit up, up on the map, although it will distract hogs, which is great, then my Inferno Tower really has no obvious spot to go. I can't put my Inferno Tower down where the hut is, or it won't target, it won't distract units that are coming in either lane. So I'm really at kind of a weird area of vulnerability there. So when people play hogs really fast against me when they know my Inferno Tower card is not up, well, then they're going to have a little bit of a, uh, I'll be, oh, they'll catch me off guard, you know, well, not catch me off guard, they'll just catch me unable able to defend so that's something that you know if you if you play against a spawner deck you should always have that in the back of your mind not only how do I defend but how do I capitalize on my offensive pushes even if they have an inferno tower or a hidden tesla which are even more popular right now even more in vogue than inferno towers it's really difficult for me to counter that in my deck I opt to bring poison instead of the uh the arrow card so I have poison because poison is much more useful useful offensively for me like you can see I'm using it right now and in the spawner deck it's awesome when I have a long uh, you know a long trail of troops heading towards a, uh, a tower it's awesome to combine that with a poison spell to melt away any defending troops the opposition places but you can see here he picks up a two to one tower uh, win against me and it was a, a pretty convincing win at that so he did a good job of timing when he knew I didn't have my defensive cards and then he really capitalized on that. On the next replay we're going to watch here, you'll see this uh, defender, he's, he's a different strategy here. Now, minions are tough for me to counter as well, namely the minion horde. And uh, the minion horde, I only, in my deck, I don't have too many error targeting troops. I have the princess, which, by the way, if you're looking to play a spawner deck, can be replaced with spear goblins or archers. I actually prefer archers or even musketeer, but uh, archers are good because there's two targets there and spear goblins have uh, three obviously 
But let's get back to the purpose of today's video, right? So against a spawner deck, one of the absolute best cards you can have in your deck, so maybe you're playing in a, you know, one of your uh, homemade tournaments. Uh, I know we have tournaments every single week in Elite Nation. So if you have the opportunity to, cha to change your deck and you know you're going against somebody who's playing a spawner deck, it's really good to play a giant skeleton defensively because what that allows you to do is really make up for the elixir advantage your opponent who has the spawner deck is getting by pumping out all those troops out of their huts and it allows you to take them all out with one giant hit point unit and more importantly that giant bomb he leaves in his place. So let's go over the great cards to counter a spawner deck. One is the giant skeleton. Two is obviously offensively playing a hog or a fast moving target, especially with free spell, is really effective against a spawner deck. Three, especially going opposite lane that the spawners are actually coming from. So for example, I have my Barbarian Hunt in the left hand lane right now. If you're playing against a spawner deck, it would be a, a great time to go ahead and drop a hog and maybe a free spell in the right lane. But getting back to the cards that work well against it, Giant Skeleton, Hog offensively, and of course, Splash Damage. The Dark Prince works really well against spawner decks. Barbarian's not so much against my deck because I have the Valkyrie who could a great counter to Barbarians. And and I did mention that you can sub the Musketeer card for the, the uh, Princess card. Well, I have the Musketeer in this deck too, so that'd be pretty hard, Ash, to do. So don't, don't sub the Musketeer and then have two Musketeers. That'd be pretty crazy if you could do that anyway. But uh, back, to the, back to the subject here. So right now in the match, I'm actually feeling pretty good about things, right? I have the Giant backed up by the Musketeer. Then I drop my Poison Spell early. I said I made mistakes in this match, and this was one of them. Had I known that he was going to play a 3 Musketeer card, I obviously would have delayed that Poison spell. I should always react to my opponent. I shouldn't play preemptively. Why would I drop that Poison spell like that? Just so, just so he didn't drop troops in my path? That doesn't make any sense. I should have played. I should have waited on the Poison and waited to see where he defended first. Then I would have gotten the tower down, and I wouldn't have had to use another Poison afterwards to take it down. And then I leave the 3 Musketeers alive, and they take down my tower, so that one one little mistake the defender capitalizes on. Remember, I looked pretty good in this match. I looked like I might have had a great shot of winning. Then he drops down that minion horde and he has the musketeer still going to town on my king tower and things just unravel at that point. I play the uh, the inferno tower reactively and he takes advantage of that. So very good job on his part. And that brings me to my last and probably the most important part of countering a spawner deck. And that is playing things very cautiously and waiting for your opponent to make a miscue. Because remember, a 4.6 average elixir cost deck like mine doesn't leave me with a lot of flexibility in, in mounting really fast defenses. So again, the cards that do well against my deck are Giant Skeleton. Uh, Arrows do well against my deck at stopping the Princess, obviously. Fireball does great because it can take down my Barbarian. But one thing about my deck is I do have the, the Giant and the Valkyrie for uh, higher hit point units. You know, that didn't used to be the meta strategy of a spawner deck, so things are changing a little bit, and I'm not as vulnerable to the, uh, the Fireball and Lightning as I once was was. Now, Lightning Spell does get, does well against my deck as well, because some people will just target the uh, keep hammering away at one of my towers, and then it creates problems for me to offensively focus on one lane, because I don't want so much damage done to my tower. The Minion Horde, as I talked about, the Goblin Barrel, which I just passed over, is tough for me to react to when I don't have the arrows in, but I love the Poison Spell, so I'm in like kind of a weird spot there, but you know, if you can keep picking away at a tower with fast Fast acting damage, uh, you know, arrows, like I said, fireball, lightning, those direct damage spells does really well. And of course, giant skeleton is, is probably the most important card to uh, that I would use if I was playing against a, uh, a spawner deck. When I see the giant skeleton, that's when I know there's probably going to be a problem. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention all the splash damage cards. You have Ice Wizard, you have Wizard, you have Dark Prince, and you have, uh, of course, Bomber and Baby Dragon as well are, are great cards against a spawner deck. Really holds up my offensive push so guys thanks so much for watching hope you picked up a tip or two as always take care guys we don't play for fame we don't play for cash